considering talking with a foundation who maybe you've done research on, you think you're a great fit for their current priorities, but you don't know, and maybe you just missed their last grant cycle, but you want to be able to submit a grant next year. You want to talk with them now. We always encourage people to be looking for foundations that are going to support their needs up to a year ahead of time because grants can take six to nine months to acquire. So you want to have conversations with program officers, build relationships with foundations and kind of get a timeline together for the grants that you're going to request 12 months out. Right now, lots of things are changing. Whether you're in a place in the world where there has been a natural disaster or the economy has crashed or there is a pandemic, different priorities change the priorities foundations want to fund. Foundations have the ability to um, change grant cycles, to change priorities, to change giving amounts at any time. So we wanna make sure that you have thought through those questions and that you can have a conversation with program officers as you're doing your research so you can be more effective for your organizations. So we're gonna role play here and I am gonna be calling a foundation to ask these types of questions for prospective future donors. So I'm gonna ring, ring. Good afternoon, Smith Foundation. Good afternoon, my name is Mandy. I'm calling with the Opening Doors organization here in Hickory, North Carolina, and I would love to ask someone a couple of questions about your future grant cycles for 2021 and wondered if you could point me in the right direction. Well, Mandy, I am more than happy to help you with that. What kind of questions do you have specifically about those grant cycles? Well, we are working on a capital project and I've seen the priorities that you guys have listed on your website. I've done a little research on your 990s to see who you have funded in the past and at what levels. And it seems like we might be a good fit for the capital project that we're doing. We work with the homeless in North Carolina. So we're building a larger shelter to meet the current and growing needs of those in our community. And I didn't know if based on everything that's going on in the area currently, if you guys are going to be keeping the same priorities priorities next year or if those are going to be changing? Well, at this moment, we won't be changing our priorities too much, but we will be focusing those a little bit more. So again, we will be focusing on things like essential house building constructions, that type of organization. But because the situation is tight for everyone, we will be making determinations based on the level of experience, success, and really looking at those organizations that have the capacity to really give the most um, bang for the buck. So we really want to invest in organizations that have a solid history of success and that this isn't their first time trying to implement a program. Okay, do you feel like the organization will continue to fund at the same level that they have in the past? Or do you think that the, the board has decided maybe they're gonna give larger grants to fewer people or smaller grants to more people? Well. As always, I, I tell everyone that calls in, I'm not the one that makes the decision, so I really cannot tell you what the board may or may not do. It's very possible that they will give out larger amounts to see that investment go further with groups that have that proven history and maybe limit those first time grants. That is a very possible reaction to the current situation, simply because we are investing in the projects that we are funding. So I would say that it is very realistic that there will be fewer grant awards and, and higher dollars given out in those awards. Do you think there will be any multi-year grants? Is that something that your organization typically provides? Absolutely. We actually just started considering that because once those relationships are built and we're seeing the impact of the dollars, it's easier to continue on into a second year instead of using our staff time and you know our grantee staff time to go through an entire proposal process. So we are exploring the possibility of a two-year grant cycle, at least for this coming cycle. And that means we will need our grantees to have a good idea of what the projected budget for year two in their project will look like and what those needs look like as well. So that would be something to kind of note in your to-do list is looking at the two-year priorities instead of one. Okay, I just have one more question. I know that sometimes foundations um, choose not to have grant cycles if they have lost money in their investments at the end of a the year. They're not required by law to give out dollars. Do you anticipate that your foundation would choose not to give out dollars next year if the economy continues in the direction that it's currently going, or would you probably still have grant cycles? I know that you guys were around in 2008 when the economy took a downturn before. Can you give me any insights on how you guys handled that previously and what you feel like you might do now? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't tell you everything. What I can tell you is the Smith Foundation is a part of this community, and we always want our business to put community first. 
So yes, by law, businesses such as ours are required to give up to 5%. And while it may impact the, the number of dollars we're able to give, we certainly will continue to give at whatever level we are able to. It may look a little bit different if the economy continues to spiral downwards or those dollars are not there. We may be looking at more partnerships, more in-kind contributions, and really building and solidifying those partnerships instead of just cash grant awards. And it's really difficult to say that right now because we're just on the, you know, starting out in this process. So I would say check back, but I can tell you the Smith Foundation is, you know, we are committed to this community and we want to make sure that we dollars get where they need to go. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I look forward to talking to you again next year. Thanks so much. So I would encourage all of you to know that some foundations will not have grant cycles if they have lost money in their investments at the end of this year or any year. Uh, nonprofit foundations are required by law to give away 5% of their assets annually if they made money. If they didn't make money, they're not required to give that away. Some foundations on the flip side of that are gonna give out more. They are required to give 5%, but that doesn't mean that's all they can give. Some places will give more because they know there's a larger need in that community. So whether it's a forest fire in California or a flood in Texas or a hurricane in Florida, there are foundations all the time that are giving out more than they are required to by law and an economic downturn is no different. So I would definitely have open conversations, be reading foundation websites for updates and changes and try to be as communicative as you can with foundations that you want to partner with going forward so you can stay on top of what they are hoping to do and just have realistic expectations that as the economy has a downturn, you're going to see changes happening in the world of foundation giving. Absolutely. We hope that this has been helpful and we are going to continue to record some role playing for you, but we hope this playlist has been helpful. If you have specific questions that you'd like us to role play based on our experience and our conversations with foundations, go ahead and shoot those over to us in an email, team at fundingforgood.org, and we're happy to tackle those for you and put them up on the YouTube page.